Okay, so before you get into taking a tilt series, and th there's practical points that Cindy is going to be demonstrating for both cryo and um, and uh, plastic sections in the videos, but the main points are that you need to adjust the beam and your exposure parameters. And this is a difficult thing in all situations because there's a perennial trade-off between the specimen damage and the signal to noise ratio um, in images and and resulting and in the resulting reconstruction. And this is the case with cryo, obviously, but it's also the case with plastic sections where excessive exposure can give you uh, stain, migration, and other damage. Um, in addition, with uh, plastic sections, there, there are issues of how to get enough exposure to get nice, clean images uh, without having too much drift in the images. So these are things you need to attend to to make sure that things are working well. Um, one of the decisions you have to make is whether to let the program start at zero or go to high tilt manually. By manually, what we mean is that you would make sure that your centricity is refined before you start, and you would either run the walk up or tilt up with pushing the button. And you might do this if you're not sure if you can get to the highest tilt angle or if you think the walk up might fail. But otherwise, you can start at zero and, you, and, and use uh, one of the buttons that are enabled, the end loop button as Cindy will show in the videos, if you want to pause after the first uh, tilt is reached and make sure that things are good. Um, and very important with plastic sections is to pre-expose by some amount, about 2,000 electrons per square angstrom, so that you've gotten most of the shrinkage and warping um, out of the way and not much will happen during the tilt series. Now the tilt series dialog is huge. And you have choices about how you can look at it. You can look at the whole thing. Um, you can look at the left or the right sides, or you can um, step through it one section after another. Um, another thing before we get into looking at the pieces of it is to note that the some of the parameters exposed there, particularly the tilt interval and the, the focus parameters, are the same as the ones that you can see and set in other places. There's just one underlying parameter until you start setting up multiple tilt series. Um, and the other thing about the dialog is that depending upon whether you're at zero tilt or high tilt when you open the dialog, things are going to be enabled or disabled in intelligent ways. So. Um, this is showing the dialog in the mode where you can step through one piece after another with these previous and next buttons. And this tilt angle specifications is straightforward. Um, so you know, we're back. Uh, we have with you. Um, OK. okay. Uh, wanted to make a point here. Point here. Hearing myself. Okay. Okay. I turned off my speaker. Um, okay. So the low mag tracking is this option here, um, and this is not needed very often. It's needed if the field of view that, uh, that you're working with is less than about a micron, where tracking is not very good. Um, if as you go from one tilt to another, and um, the low mag that you specify here only needs to be low enough to give about two microns or more of image field. And this all assumes a well-behaved stage. You have a very poorly behaved stage. This could become a tool in at normal um, magnifications. But just typically, this is used for higher magnifications. This is the place to limit the image shift um, that the program will let it get up to during the tilt series. And this is needed if you have to uh, uh, intrinsic limits on the image shift, or if the objective aperture uh, intrudes at a certain point. Now, this is a big section, this intensity control. Um, and it's important because uh, if you just go in with a constant intensity, the specimen gets thicker at higher tilts and less beam gets through, and you get less signal to noise ratio. And it's complicated because it covers several situations. For example, there is the option for constant intensity. And this you might select if you were tilting it at 
intervals that vary with the cosine of the angle. Uh, the option, the second option, is very popular for cryo, and it will vary the um, intensity as one over cosine of the angle, or as one over cosine to a power, a fractional power. So this shows that um, it varies quite a bit with one over cosine, and the power is allow, allows you to temper down how much it varies at the higher tilts. And the option that's used frequent for, frequently for plastic section materials is setting a target number of counts um, for the tilt series. Because one over cosine will give a rather unpredictable and big variation in the counts. And you'll see in the videos Cindy making use of this dialogue. Now another thing about this um, is that you can change exposure time instead of beam intensity. This is a relatively recent option. Um, and there were a number of reasons to change for beam intensity being changed instead of exposure time, but there are those who have reasons for using exposure time instead, and so you have this option now. And when you select this, all the things get relabeled to refer to exposure instead of beam, and you even get a few more options uh, to play around with. Okay, the autofocus section um, has an interval at which you can set how often it's going to focus anyway, even when the predictions seem to be reliable. This is the thing about the predictions with focus, is that you're not, once you start relying on them, you don't focus, and you have no idea how good the predictions were doing. All you can do is see what happens to the standard error of that prediction. So it's good to just keep checking in periodically. Five to six degrees seems to be a good value. Um, you can choose to focus every time above a certain angle although this isn't really needed at the end of the series, it, it is often needed at the beginning. Um, and checking autofocus is useful, and this is an option in the focus menu as well. And um, what it's designed to do is to prevent runaway focus changes, uh, because when at high tilt, sometimes uh, autofocus doesn't work well enough. And so it always thinks it's at zero focus and tries to change to the target, and it just does this over and over again. Usually this problem will go away by 50 degrees, and um, the check autofocus will flush the problem out and let you address it one way or another. There's two ways to deal with it. One would be to use an autofocus offset that's the negative of the target be focused. So what is this autofocus offset? That is an amount that the focus will get changed before even taking the focus pictures, and then it will get changed back after the focus pictures are taken. And so you'd use a positive value so that it would be taking it where it thinks zero is, and so then if it screws up and says it's zero, it isn't going to go change the focus. And the other thing you might use this for is to take focus pictures at a higher defocus and a higher contrast, which is obviously useful for cryo. And in that case, you would put in a negative defocus. So if you're, oh no, oh, I've got that wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, defocus, if your defocus target is minus six microns, you need to have an offset of plus six to get up to zero. No, never mind. I'm sorry. Take it all back. I'm right. Okay. Yes. You want to try more, oh, more under focus means negative value. Um, sorry. Okay. Ah, okay. Final section of the um, tilt series setup is the, um, in the, no, it's not the final section. This is the initial actions. And as you'll see in the demos, it's a good idea to have a centered image in the uh, buffer A before you uh, start into this dialogue, because you're going to spend some time in here and things could drift. So you check this to say there is an image there. Refining your centricity should be done sometime before the series. Doesn't have to be done here if you've already done it, but it should definitely be done after pre irradiating the specimen. Um, this anchor feature is a feature that is designed to try to get things to work out better. Um, you get the working tracking to work out better if it has problems at high tilt. Namely, if the tracking is going to get off, it's li liable to get off at high tilt and it's likely to be accurate below about 45 or 50 degrees. So 
if you take an image at that angle during the walk up and you align to it on the way back down, then by the time it gets back down to zero, it's going to be pretty well aligned still. It's going to fix the alignment at, at this critical point and then be good from that point on. If you do the walk up manually, you have an option in the, in the tasks menu to do something called walk up and anchor, where it can leave an anchor, and then you can select this option to use an anchor that got left there. Okay, this is the final section. Um, this is track and control, and uh, the defaults here are, are usually good, but there's one of the things I wanted to mention here was this repeat the record image if it's out of register by more than a certain amount. Um, and um, typically this 5% limit would be good. You can make it smaller if you really have um, worried about your area of interest being very close to the borders of the field at zero tilt. You can make it bigger or turn it off for very high mag work or for low dose. Um, separate from that um, is a situation where any kind of auto alignment makes a big shift, which is liable to be a mistake. And so we have this option here, stop if the auto alignment shift is bigger than a certain amount. And that's a good protection there. Um, and finally, this, will, this option here controls how often the program will take tracking images. Um, and it's something that if you have a lot of tracking going on, you could raise this for high mag work or for low dose work to reduce the amount of tracking images.